Hi everybody and welcome to the Farmers Branch Economic Development Update for calendar year 2020 so far. I'm Tom Bryson coming to you from new fire station number two which opened in late April. Now 2020 has been a year that no one bargained for but while your Farmers Branch Economic Development Team continues to work hard to attract new businesses to Farmers Branch the challenge of keeping existing businesses here and open has taken on a new priority like never before. As the coronavirus pandemic descended on Dallas County early this year, businesses and public buildings were shut down in an effort to stem the tide of COVID-19 and try to help slow the spread of the virus. The Economic Development Department started calling large employers to find out about their immediate needs that the city could assist with and see if they would support small businesses during this time. Glazers, Coca-Cola Southwest Beverages, Brinks, Essilor, Weirs, and BSN were among those that helped by ordering takeout from Farmers Branch restaurants for their own support staff. Mayor Robert Dye put his own money where his own mouth is, offering to offset the cost of local residents ordering takeout from Farmers Branch restaurants up to $2,500 with meals on the mayor. The city began to publish listings of restaurants that were open for delivery or takeout during the stay at home period and continues to let people know what restaurants are open on the city's website. Retention specialist Amy Mueller has made nearly 1,000 contacts of Farmers Branch businesses of various sizes to be sure everyone had specific information on small business grants and otherwise difficult to decipher county and federal mandates. Economic Development Director Allison Cook made contact with the Texas Restaurant Association and found out about an upcoming TRA grant program. When the closures for restaurants were happening in March, we just felt helpless. We wanted to help the local restaurants here and the ones that were planning to come. And so we called every single Farmers Branch restaurant and let them know about the date that that grant was opening so that they could get some funds in the door. Um, and everybody knows it was needed because restaurants were closing down and people were just in a panic. And how could you help? Well, obviously delivery and takeout, but the restaurateurs needed to pay their employees. And so the grant was a well needed um, timing that the TRA put together. We also interviewed Joe so we could show other people how they could help restaurants. And he has some good tips and that's still on our website, I think today. In addition to help sourcing grants and funds for local restaurants, we created a new program called Cooking with the Council. The idea was that we would partner local councilmen with some of our restaurateurs and show the public how to cook something special. So we all know we were cooking more during that season. Some of us are not so great, and so we need a little help. And a restaurant and a demonstration is very helpful. I mean, one of the chefs showed us how to cook the perfect steak, and another one was showing us a duck fat fried rice. So the variety of things to cook was there. It also showed that those of us that are not the best cooks really do need delivery and takeout. So we got some local exposure for restaurants that they need, and it reminded everyone, please don't forget about your local restaurants, and you know they can cook it better. In addition, the economic development team delivered hundreds of bags to Metrocrest Services for their use in packaging food for their patrons. The team also secured a few pallets of food donated by El Rancho Supermarket that helped Metrocrest Services get through a shortage experienced in April. In order to assist with supply availability, Cox Farms Market at the shops at Mustang Station opened in March during the early stages of the pandemic lockdown, created senior hours in the early morning, and stocked shelves according to their limited capacity. COVID hit right around the time that we received our first deliveries from our distributors. We had stuff that was going to perish within a couple of weeks. Already coming through the door, COVID hit, and then the panic happened, and it was one of those things where it's too late to say, no, we can't open. It's so we just had to push through it. We've been able to meet our neighbors and get to know our customer and our client, our clientele and see what they like and what they want and start slowly starting to customize the store to this area and to this community. The most surprising thing actually, as far as best sellers go at this location, it's called Jenny's Ice Creams. It's out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, very, very, very well made ice cream, very creamy, very rich in flavor, and we are selling a ton of it. Um, we have items that range from 
are sandwiches, or soups, cheesecakes, some dips, coffee, cookies, cheeses. I mean, you name it, in some, some form or fashion or some any department within the store, we have something that's made either here in Dallas or made here in Texas. Our registers are being cleaned after each usage. Uh, that's the credit card reader, that's the basket, that's the cart that someone used, that's the scanner that we're sliding the product over. Um, we're just trying to make sure that our customers feel welcomed and safe shopping with us here. We're just happy to get open and be able to meet the people that are gonna be shopping with us and start creating a store tailored to them and make this their neighborhood stop. Federal CARES funding relief for businesses impacted by the pandemic was allocated to Farmers Branch through Dallas County earlier this summer. A primary component of this funding strategy has been for the city to team with the development firm Team Better Block to create temporary outdoor spaces or parklets for restaurants to offer an outdoor, socially distant seating scenario. Kikitas and Nuevo Leon were among the first restaurants to build those outdoor temporary patio spaces. Like others across the country, Farmers Branch hotels are feeling major impacts of the coronavirus pandemic as people essentially stop traveling, especially in April, May, and June. Hotels in general took about a 70 to 80 percent drop in revenue year over year, and that's pretty substantial. But as an industry, we took a moment and stepped back and said, what can we do for our travelers that will make it easier to travel going forward? I think Hilton took an important step when they rolled out Hilton's Clean Stay. And it's basically 10 points within the guest room that allow us to communicate with our guests about the heavy touch points that guests, guests have, like the remote control. You know, so guests will see something slightly different in the guest room than they have in the past, but it's, at, it's there to give confidence to our traveler, not to make them apprehensive. A lot of our guests are no longer business travelers, they're leisure travelers, and they're trying to find something to do because I think they just got fed up with being inside their homes for three months. Um, but we're happy to add that opportunity to get away. That's kind of fun for us. And Farmer's Branch has a lot to offer. And we're starting to see group travel return some because previously group was just pushing back and pushing back and pushing back. And we're excited because now we have some soccer teams coming in for tournaments and adds a little bit more excitement and flair to the hotel. Doubletree has a lot of great things going for it, but if I were to tell you my favorite thing about the hotel, this is cheesy, but I'm still a sucker for the cookie. I love our cookies. Even though the pandemic is not over, the local economy is showing some signs of life and shades of resilience. We realize that we have a lot of essential businesses, so we were thankful for the diversity of our industries because that meant that we did not have one dominating use that was forced to shut down for an extended period of time. Um, so we do have some resi resilience built in right now with our business community, but we had a lot of businesses hurting and we absolutely know that and our department reached out to the ones that we knew and many of the large ones and the small ones alike just to ask first of all how can we help what do you need from us right now can we give you any information is it county information federal information state information what are you lacking and so we made sure that we put them together with the correct partners state and local partners that they needed we are now seeing signs of life within the hotel industry that was hit the most we have bookings for soccer tournaments and hockey tournaments um, this fall and in the spring, spring of 2021. So there are definitely signs of life within the hotel industry that was really suffering. So overall, I would say we have weathered the storm. We are thankful for the businesses here and they know that they can reach out to us. And another part was a lot of our large businesses, when I call them, I asked them to consider ordering from the small restaurateurs, small businesses, and uh, they all agreed that they would. And so it's nice to see the big guys helping the small. Through it all, there has been positive economic development news this year. In February, Trinity Industries announced they were moving their headquarters to 155,000 square feet in International Plaza at 14221 North Dallas Parkway. Up to 100 full-time employees will move into the space after final renovations. Trinity Industries joins Tenet as new occupants of the former home of J.P. Morgan. To bolster the health of the west side industrial sector, Mercer Business Park secured a lease in July with Vanity Arts to fill 115,000 square feet. Scout and Cellar also leased additional space in this building with 25,000 square feet. 
Speaking of large leases, the office occupancy rate for the entire city remains around 80%. Even with everything that 2020 has had to offer, the Demolition Rebuild Program has continued to move forward with six applications to date. That compares to last year's total of 14 applications and 17 in 2018. Finally, tourism in 2020 has been a tricky proposition. From January into March, soccer, basketball, and cheer tournaments accounted for 1,578 room nights in Farmers Branch hotels. Then. April, May, and June were quiet months. In July, there was a slight uptick in sports and business group travel with 220 room nights for a hockey tournament. The Defeater soccer games in August totaled 70 room nights, and Labor Day weekend in September saw the U90C tournament booked for local hotels. That tournament received a grant from the State of Texas Events Trust Fund and Farmers Branch Corporate Loyalty Assistance to secure almost 500 room nights. The Farmers Branch Hotel community also grew this year with the opening of the Hampton Inn on the west side near the Omni, complete with 116 rooms. And that will do it for your Farmers Branch Economic Development Update for calendar year 2020 thus far. Your Farmers Branch Economic Development team continues to work hard each and every day to attract new businesses to Farmers Branch and keep existing businesses here. We'll be back in a few months with a look back at the extraordinary year that was 2020 while the phone continues to ring here in Farmers Branch. Until then, I'm Tom Bryson. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay. Break break into my favorite things before. Long. What did you just say? Here we go. Here we go. Here's Tommy. Hold on.